Are you familiar with the, it's kind of controversial now, Bill C-16? You would have to recognize somebody's preferred gender pronoun, and if you don't, you could be thrown in jail, essentially. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's amazing. I think that they should totally go for that. Hey friends, welcome back. It's Sean from SGT Report, and I'm extremely excited to have a new guest to the program. I've been following his work for a very long time. It's Dan Dix from Press for Truth. Please do check out his Press for Truth YouTube channel and subscribe. He's one of the voices in the truth media that I do absolutely trust. Like I said, I've been following his work for a very long time, but this is the first opportunity I've had to speak with him, and I'm grateful for it. Dan, how are you? I'm very well. Thanks so much for having me. Well, I appreciate you coming on, and I appreciate your perspective on truth. So just to set the stage for folks, I've been following you. Boy, I mean, you've done some 9-11 documentaries. You covered the Toronto 9-11 hearings and turned that into a six-hour DVD. You are all over truth. And for me, the litmus test for truth is do people know what really happened on 9-11? Can they describe what a false flag is? And can they break down the 9-11 event for us, which you do remarkably well? Uh, how did you get started in this truth battle? Oh, wow. I uh, kind of had an early beginning, I suppose you could say. It was around 98 or 99 or so um, when I was in school. I had a friend uh, tell me about, actually, the first thing I've ever, ever heard about was chemtrails. Somebody told me about that, and I thought it sounded crazy. And, um, I, you know, I just brushed it off as conspiracy theory and then started looking into this thing. Uh, saw that maybe my friend had something to this, and then he gave me, back in, it was 1998, a, a box of VHS tapes, and, uh, you know, the first one I watched in there was, uh, was a, uh, it was an interview between John Rappaport and David Icke, interestingly enough, and then the next one I watched was an early Alex Jones film, and then from there, I kind of spiraled down the rabbit hole, as they say, and, um, all the way up until 2001 when 9-11 happened. And then that's when I started getting more active and actually getting out into the streets and trying to, you know, meet, meet up with like-minded people and, you know, joining up some meetup groups and, um, you know, going out into the streets and handing out flyers and DVDs and all that sort of thing. Did that for four or five years, trying to work with various groups until I got to the point where I realized, you know, there was a lot of uh, conflicts and, you know, um, con you know, controversies and discussions about what the solutions ought to be. And I just said, you know what, I'm going to kind of break off and do my own thing. And um, it, it, the Bilderberg Group came to Canada in 2006. So that was really the first time I said, you know what, I'm going to go there as myself with the camera and, um, you know, go as this thing I'm going to call Press for Truth. And that's really where it started. I just I just grabbed a camera in 2006 and decided, you know, it's time to take the activism to a, a new level. And then from there, it kind of snowballed into filmmaking and then eventually going full time with PFT. Well, you're doing a great job and you continue to take the video camera and go and do actual journalism, uh, real journalism, unlike what we see coming from the likes of CNN, I'd like to say, uh, the source of fake news. And so you've done that recently, too, challenging Bill C-16 and Bill 89 at Pride Vancouver. This is an exceptionally good video, guys. It only has 3,400 views so far, and uh, it needs to have far more. We'll feature this over at SGT Report. But, Dan, I want to play a couple clips from this because, as you know, humanity is under attack. You mentioned the Bilderberg Group. I think the deep state, uh, the Bilderberg Group, uh, a lot of the war against humani humanity, these ideas are hatched at places like, well, Tavistock Institute, uh, the Bilderberg Group, uh, Council on Foreign Relations. These plans are hatched and then the strategies are trickle down into the corporate media, into the corporations. So the fact that you cover Bilderberg Group meetings is very, very important because what these people do in secret is very tyrannical, fascist, and anti-human. And I think that's best exemplified by Bill C-16. Let me read this for you guys from Zero Hedge. Canada passes law criminalizing use of wrong gender pronouns. Canada passed a law Thursday making it illegal to use the wrong gender pronouns. Canada's Senate passed Bill C-16, which puts gender identity and gender expression into both the country's human rights code as well as the hate crime category of its criminal code. And this passed by a vote of 67 to 11. Great news, announced Justin Trudeau. And I have a soundbite here, guys. This is Justin Trudeau, who you know when he was sworn in. I played this soundbite many times. He swore his fidelity to the queen. Now here's Justin on the transgender rights bill. I'm proud to announce that tomorrow, 
on the International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia, we will be tabling a bill in the House of Commons to ensure the full protection of transgender people. The full protection of transgender people. That is interesting. Special rights for special groups at the expense of the rest of the majority. All right. So, Dan, before I play any of these sound bites from your remarkable interviews at uh, the Pride Vancouver event, your thoughts on Bill C-16? Well, as I mentioned to one couple who asked me to be open, unbiasedly frank about it, I said, look, I have a problem with uh, the, the policing of our language um, when you are going to enforce you know, the police upon me to have to suspend reality and recognize you as whatever you want to be recognized as. That's uh, what people don't understand is there's a slippery slope here with C-16. When somebody is a man and wants to be identified as a woman, for example, and they fight hard to get that right, when all of a sudden, you know, later down the road, someone wants to identify as a cat, this person is going to say, well, who am I to oppress them? You know, because I've been fighting for that for myself. And it's just a, it's just an endless slippery uh, road uh, that's, um, that, that's leading Canada <laughs> down a tyrannical uh, path. So, you know, what it literally says is that you have to, like, say uh, he or uh, C or Z or Zer or use they or them <laughs> or whatever these people want to be referred to as. And if you don't, you could essentially go to jail. I asked a lot of people at this rally um, their, their views on that. Probably around 50% of them um, said they fully agree with that, completely in support with that. They said, you know, the government should be able to go in and, um, and uh, yeah, uh, you know, arrest somebody or something for that, which to me is insane. I asked them, what about the right of the other? individual who just wants to, you know, not have to, uh, l like I said, suspend reality and, and just recognize you as what you want to be called as. And um, they were incapable of seeing that side of the argument. Um, so it is a scary, slippery slope um, that this is leading to. It's still a bill. It's passed its third uh, reading in the Senate, um, which means that it's now on to royal assent, um, which means it could become a law any day now. Um, so this is incredibly, incredibly scary for the Canadian people, and it really might set a precedent all across the world. Hopefully not. Now, this attack on speech, this attack on language is very orchestrated, and it was predicted, I think, uh, best by maybe Brave New World or uh, George Orwell's 1984, right? To flip speech on its head. War is peace truth is lies. Uh, this seems to be an orchestrated attack by, for lack of a better word, let's just say Illuminati powers. The people that control this planet, if they can destroy speech, if they can destroy spiritual norms, then they can control a population. It's really a divide and conquer strategy. Do you think I'm overstating that or do you think that's spot on? Not at all. I think you're spot on. In fact, they, they know that they can take it to a further extent by uh, getting the youth and conditioning the youth and taking the youth away from their parents. This is another bill that I, uh, that I brought up with these people, very controversial one, Bill 89. This would say that if a child wants to change his gender, wants to be called Sally instead of Billy all of a sudden at age six or whatever age, um, and the parents do not recognize that child's preferred gender, the government could then come in and take that child away, put them in a, in a, a you know, a, a foster care uh, facility, um, claiming that the parents are violating the child's uh, rights. This is just, as you said, um, the, the, the dark sides of the Illuminati, the dark sides of the control system going after our very children and taking away what it is to be human. A lot of these people were telling me, you know, <laughs> trying to tell me that there's this thing called non-binary. You know, uh, you, oh, you could be sec uh, sexually attracted to a man or a woman or neither. And I'm like, what do you mean neither? Non-binary. You can't be neither a man or a woman. They're taking the humanity out of uh, being human. And basically, like the kid in, in the interview uh, said, you know, making us all equal, which is really kind of a, a, a Marxist agenda. Yeah, I want to play some of those sound bites here in a second. But first, I want to remind people that Tom DeLay, 
uh, told us just a couple years ago, he warned the American people that there was a document circulating at the Department of Justice. Uh, an effort was being made and coordinated to legalize 12 perversions. And now I really like to say that what we're seeing happen in Canada is really the litmus, litmus test for what they want to see happen throughout Europe and, of course, ultimately in the United States. Now, this comes from the Independent. Most bestiality is legal declares Canada's Supreme Court. Now, I'll remind people that Tom DeLay said that among those 12 perversions that were being sought to uh, be mainstreamed or legalized were pedophilia and bestiality. So again, this is a slippery slope into an absolutely despotic future where humankind, human beings, the spirit and entity, the beauty of the human spirit is absolutely degraded by this New World Order system. Now, Dan had the presence of mind and courage to walk into the belly of the beast here at the Pride Vancouver event, and he talked to some folks, and I want to play this soundbite just as it pertains to what their thoughts are on Bill C-16, and of course they're very excited. Listen to about a minute of this. So why don't you start by telling us what brings you uh, out today? Well, I just want to come out to like support the LGBTQI community and just like have fun and like dance. <laughs> um, for I, I just noticed a, a letter in there I've never heard before. I, I, I recall it used to be LGBT, right? And what was the last thing you just said? QIA. And what does it stand for? Lesbian, gay, wait, LGB, trans, wait, LGBT, Q, queer. I, I'm not quite sure what the IA stands for, intersex. but intersex. Intersex, okay. LGBTQ, and I heard something about I. D, what are those? I yeah, I don't actually know what the full line spectrum is. I don't right. yeah I believe there's more added I'm still not sure there's so many things they keep adding it just keeps evolving and growing it's kind of awesome <laughs> it's kind of awesome yeah they so I wanted to play that because it's LGBTQIA and even the people that are into this and support it blindly and don't understand anything about Bilderberg group or the real agenda at play here they just love it even though they themselves can't track it how are we the people supposed to track this stuff uh, Dan when the government itself is going to put us in jail if we get the gender pronoun wrong yeah yeah exactly that's why um, you know I, I like to now refer to it as LGBT A B C D E F G because that's really where where it's where it's heading there is there is no stop to uh, to this like i said once you you know once you open up that door there's no there's no end to that road so <sighs> too tough to say where it's going to go like you said we we have um you know bestiality and pedophilia and things like that becoming uh, uh, normalized in canada this is what happens when you're under uh, the control of a feminist justin trudeau is openly a feminist he talks about how he's a very proud feminist and um, unfortunately, he's fallen into the SJW kind of uh, third wave form of feminism uh, ideas that are I extremely troubling and leading to things like these bestiality and pedophilia bills. They, they don't go after uh, real issues. What it really does is sparks all kinds of uh, god godless craziness. Yeah, godless craziness is spot on because that's exactly what I think the agenda is. It is, like I said... And I will continue to say it in video after video. At this point in human history, it's spiritual warfare. It's the banksters and their CIA alphabet agencies against humanity. That's what it is. And it's very spiritual in nature, as uh, Dutch banking whistleblower Ronald Bernard told us, the people at the very top worship a dark entity named Lucifer. He said it. He went to the rituals and ceremonies, and it's what woke him up. And so now I want to play this soundbite for you. Listen to these folks and how gleeful they are about the potential of putting people in jail for using the wrong language. Are you familiar with the, it's kind of controversial now, Bill C-16? No, I haven't heard of that. This is a, a bill that's being proposed where they want to make it a law where you'd have to legally recognize somebody's preferred pronouns. And if you don't, they could get the police involved and have you arrested. What, do you, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it should go to the, f yeah. to the point of having the government involved? Honestly, yeah, because I think it's just like a form of respect where like, because it's your body, you should be able to choose like what you want to be referred to as mm -hmm. and like if they're not going to respect you then yeah. <laughs> you would have to recognize somebody's preferred gender pronoun and if you don't you could be thrown in jail essentially. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's amazing. I think that they should totally go for that. Uh, C-16 is really an amazing bill. I think we need to um, recognize that uh, everybody needs to be protected in the workplace. 
Everybody needs to be protected in the workplace. I want to circle back to that first soundbite. That person looks like she, he may be around 14, 15 years old, certainly not an adult. Uh, and uh, that person said, it's a form of respect. And if they're not going to respect you, dot, 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 guess you better go to jail. Dan, this is absolute tyrannical. I don't think Orwell himself could have gotten this thing right when he wrote 1984. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I just uh, tweeted uh, out a thought I was just having the other day after, after you know, all of this. And I, I just thought to myself, you know, when I was graduating high school almost 20 years ago now, I never could have imagined back then that in 20 years from now, it would be controversial to say there are two genders. You know, I, I never could have fathomed that we'd be in a time right now that if I say that, it's going to offend someone. Like how did we get here? You know, I mean, we know how we got here. It's spiritual warfare. More and more people have been turning their uh, backs on God, essentially. And when you do that, you're, <laughs> you're left to your own. You're subject to the, the prince of the air here on the earth, and you're not going to have a good time when you do that. Yeah, do what thou willst, right? I mean, it reminds me of the Aleister Crowley playbook. And uh, boy, you know, I, I mentioned Aleister Crowley in a recent video, and I had some trolls come out and tell me I had it wrong, and he was a brilliant man. Look, this is a satanic agenda, is it not? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it, when you research these types of things, you know, my, my research anyways took me down the path of realizing that these people at the top, if you're going to look into what are they into, you start finding out that, oh, they are actually into the occult. They're very heavily steeped in it. And uh, they go to things like uh, Bohemian Grove and Skull and Bones and these sorts of things. When you're a multi-billionaire you don't take time out of your busy schedule to go to the woods for three days just for, you know, just, just, just for good times and joking around. These guys are serious about this, which makes me think there's probably something to it. They're pr pretty smart guys. Um, so they're dabbling into the occult. There's no conspiracy there. Um, and, you know, it, it makes me realize that th this is essentially how uh, people are being manipulated through the th through the spiritual uh, entities that are controlling these people that open open themselves up to them, they may not even be aware of this. Um, some some of it may be done uh, un unintentionally, just just due to their own lusts and desires for earthly pleasures or whatever. They're being used like pawns, but some of them know what's up. You know, I think at, at the top is highest uh, of levels. Um, it's an all out uh, attack against uh, against God, everything that Jesus Christ stood for. And um, that, that's that's what the whole that's what this whole thing boils down to. And if you're researching the New World Order and, and, you know, conspiracies and false flags and you don't have an understanding of the bigger picture, the spiritual side of the aspect. Well, I, I'm not so sure you're ever going to really understand what the true solutions ought to be moving forward. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, and I really appreciate your perspective on that because that's exactly what the conclusions are that I've drawn. And before we move on, I want to ask you about Bill 89 because C-16 will criminalize speech, but Bill 89 will criminalize parenting, right? So if you have a little one who comes up and is being brainwashed at the public school into just thinking anything goes and today I want to be a female, this is a little person who is not even sexualized yet. They haven't gone through puberty. They don't know what sex is, and yet that's exactly what the working groups in these uh, public schools want. That's exactly what the beast system wants. It wants to steal the children from the families. I mean, we've seen with Pedogate and Pizzagate what happens to children, right? that are victimized by a lot of these people in power. Uh, you know, look no further than Jimmy Seville, who is, you know, best friends with uh, Prince Charles. And uh, Jimmy Seville's pedophilic crimes were covered up for decades. So mm -hmm. Bill 89 criminalizes parenting, right? Tell us about Bill 89 and how insidious that is. It's really stunning to me in the Western world, in a civilized nation, certainly in a God-fearing nation. I guess we're not anymore. I guess Canada is no longer a God-fearing nation. Bill mm -hmm. 89 will criminalize parenting. Yeah, essentially, uh, they, they'll take your child away from you if you refuse to recognize the, uh, the kid's preferred gender. So if your child says they want to be another gender than they are, and you don't recognize that, that's a hate crime. This is getting absolutely uh, ridiculous. We know that children go through phases. I mean, a lot of girls go through tomboy phases. You know, this is a normal uh, thing in, in, in childhood. In fact, studies have shown that children who are experiencing transgender feelings, uh, eighty percent of them grow out grow out of this when they become an an adult. So you know, I I had someone comment to me 
and they said, I'm a, a, a transgender therapist and I have a client who is nine years old and I've been, um, you know, help, helping them a great deal. And I just thought to myself, wow, you, you don't have a client. You have a victim. You have a victim of, of mental abuse and you are encouraging this. A lot of um, uh, people who are experiencing these feelings have histories of sexual abuse as children. And that, that needs to be looked at. That needs to be recognized. Why, why are these feelings coming up in the first place? You know, and, and instead of like looking to surgery and, and trying to change the way God made you, maybe we got to look at some of the problems in society that are causing this in the first place. Um, so Bill 89 is really just another nail in the coffin here, here, here in Canada. And I think when, when, it, when the first case emerges, um, it should spark outrage. And I, I, I hope it does. But um, again, just a sign of the times here in Canada. I just want to circle back to the Queen. Uh, a lot of people on planet Earth believe that Queen Elizabeth is merely a ceremonial power and that she doesn't have actual power. And yet, when I play that soundbite from Justin Trudeau being sworn in, he's swearing his absolute fealty to the Queen, including secret meetings he might ever have with the Queen's Council or the Queen herself. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the Queen yields a tremendous amount of power. And I mentioned Jimmy Savile being friends, best friends, in fact, with Prince Charles. So, so close they were that Prince Charles wanted Jimmy Savile to be the godfather to his sons. Jimmy Savile was a known pedophile, a necrophiliac, and after his death, it was said in a Channel 5 documentary in the UK that he was trafficking children to the elite in London. It's funny that these things always come out after these people die, and then the mainstream media always tries to say, oh, it was just a one-off. It was just a Jimmy Seville problem. And yet the question remains, who was he trafficking children to? The elite in London. Pedogate, right? We continue to cover this issue because I think it's the key to bringing the whole thing down. What do you make of Queen Elizabeth and her power? Are, are they the people, are the Windsors the people behind this agenda, this anti-human agenda? Um, they're certainly involved. Uh, I mean, uh, like you said, um, a lot of people think that they, you know, are just kind of a show showpiece and don't really hold a lot of power. Um, but that's, that's not exactly uh, true. Um, here in Canada, um, we have appointed, it's the secretary general or the Sur surgeon general. I can't remember what it's called, but it's essentially a, a, above the prime minister. Um, anything that gets decided here in Canada, the, the prime minister doesn't have the final say, essentially. I mean, the, the surgeon general uh, appointed by the queen can, can overthrow anything. Um, so, so a lot of people don't, don't realize that, that, that our so-called democracy, if, if you're, you know, into that and you voted in this guy, well, he's not necessarily going to be the representative of the people anyways. It's the person that the queen appoints. A lot of people aren't aware of that. Yeah, and I would like to add that I have real money in the form of physical silver from Canada, from Great Britain, and from Australia. And every one of those officially minted government coins has the bust of the Queen on the front. Yeah. Or the back, I guess I should say. But has the bust of the Queen on the coin itself. So uh, if she's on the real money, guys, that should probably give you a clue about her power. Um, let me ask you this. Before we let you go, because I promised we wouldn't take more than 30 minutes of your time, do you want to talk about CERN? Uh, because, again, I believe there is spiritual warfare at play here, and I believe that the powers that be are not telling the truth about what's going on at CERN. I'm worried about quantum computing, the future of AI. That's something you just reported about recently. Would you want to talk mm -hmm. about that? That, or should we talk about the occult and Stephen Harper's uh, connections to the occult? Where would you like to go next? Whatever you want. I thought you were having me on to talk about Ethereum. Oh, I forgot uh, about Ethereum. You? You're right. I completely forgot about that. You're right. I contacted you a couple weeks ago because of your video, Ethereum linked to Bilderberg. And that was right around the time it also got sort of a Putin endorsement, quasi-Putin endorsement. Um, Ethereum. What did you find out about Ethereum? Should, is it something we should own because it might be part of whatever system's coming next? Or is it something we should run away from because it might be part of a, some sort of beast system? I, I wouldn't necessarily uh, encourage people to jump into it. I mean, I, I own a little bit. I got some a few months ago. I, I strongly recommend putting 80 to 90 percent of your assets into silver and gold. And if you want to play around with cryptocurrencies, you know, I'd maybe dabble with 10 
10% of your assets in cryptocurrencies. Um, but uh, Ethereum's been interesting. I've, I've been watching it a little closer, um, you know, ever since I got involved a little bit a couple of months ago. And I'm, I'm, I'm finding out some interesting things. When I made that video, I really didn't think I'd be making a video in that light on Ethereum that day. But that's just where the research ended up leading me. And what I uh, discovered is that, you know, it doesn't seem nearly as uh, decentralized. Uh, it, it has kind of somebody at the top, Vitalik, uh, Vitalik Buterin, um, and there's lots of issues uh, with that uh, right there that we can get into. But, you know, I looked into the history of it a little bit, and I found out that some of the initial investing, I mean, they did a big crowdfunding later, but the initial investing came from Peter Thiel. And then I thought, wait a minute, Peter Thiel's heavily involved in Bilderberg. And then I thought, wait, Peter Thiel's from PayPal. I looked up PayPal, and it dawned on me that, this is what he was trying to accomplish a long time ago with PayPal. And um, when when the blockchain ca technology came along with Naturo Sakamoto or whatever this mysterious unknown guy is, um, I, I think that's when Peter Thiel realized, oh, no, I, uh, I've fallen behind and I need to jump on the bandwagon here and um, started funding uh, Vitalik Buterin, who then uh, went on to uh, make Ethereum, e Ethereum what it is today. And as I said, there's been a lot of issues with it down the road, uh, all, all along its progression. Um, there was a, a DOA hack attack, it was called, uh, where someone, a hacker, was able to siphon off, essentially steal around 60 or $70 million worth of Ether. And that caused them to have to do what's called a hard fork. And they split the blockchain into two to try to protect that uh, those funds from uh, being stolen, essentially. And so now you, you had what's called Ethereum Classic and uh, the the new Ethereum, and that that get, that brought a, a lot of distrust uh, into what's going on here. So you have the Bilderberg ties, you have the the hacking issues. I mean, just a couple of days ago, it, it was falsely reported that Vitalik Buterin died in a in a car crash. Uh, this headline was making its ways around uh, a thread on 4chan. Turns out it's not true. But when, when the headlines went around the world uh, that morning, Ethereum took a pretty big dive uh, in its numbers. And it just goes to show ha how much importance is in one man behind this, uh, this currency. Um, so, you know, I would just be weary of uh, any of these things. I've, I've always kind of seen them as the, 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 the blueprint for the eventual cashless society, you know, where nobody's going to be able to buy or sell, essentially, unless they're a part of this system. Uh, this very well could be the, the blueprints, you know, them trying to figure out how this system is uh, eventually uh, going to work. So I would, I would, I would be uh, cautious, uh, cautious and weary. There's hundreds of altcoins popping up all the time now. Um, so keep an eye on it. And if you want to play around, you know, stick to what's real, gold and silver. And maybe maybe just play around with ten or fifteen percent if you want to check it out. But um, very very interesting what's going on in the crypto world these days. Yeah, and uh, big adjustments, uh, corrections happening in the crypto space as we're having this conversation. So anybody who hasn't gotten in uh, or has been waiting may just want to keep an eye on that. I, this is not investment advice. I'm just telling you that if you uh, didn't get in a week or two ago, you can get in thirty, forty, fifty percent cheaper now on a lot of these. So, food for thought. What I thought was uh, interesting about the Ethereum story, Dan, is all of these corporations, and this may be a red flag too. I'm not disagreeing with you by any means, but so many corporations and banks interested in the Ethereum blockchain and the Ethereum you know, system. So uh, that to me means that it has value unless the whole thing is just a PSYOP. I'm not saying it doesn't have value. I'm just saying the cryptos in general may be mm -hmm. a brainwashing attempt uh, that was hatched from the early stages to get everybody to accept the idea of digital currencies. I, I received an email just recently from a reader, I'll try to post the pictures here, uh, that said that 1988 cover of The Economist magazine, he believed the coin around the phoenix's neck could have been a Bitcoin. He says to him it looks sort of similar to Bitcoin. I don't necessarily agree with that, but you know that Rothschild Economist magazine predicted in 1988 a new world currency by 2018. It's right around the corner. It makes you wonder about these cryptos. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I first, you know, learned about it, um, it was around 2013, 2012. I started doing interviews uh, with people, and my my 
first kind of line of questioning back then was, you know, how do we know this isn't a Trojan horse uh, kind of thing? Um, over time, you know, having a better understanding of it, of, of how the blockchain works, um, I, I don't think that necessarily Bitcoin is it. You know, I, I think it's going to evolve over time. I, I mean, the the go to digital cashless system for the for the for the banking elite. Um, they're still trying to figure that out. And it makes sense why the banks are interested in this right now. I mean, really, when you think about it here in the 21st century, the, the fact that it, it takes four to like five days for me to send money to somebody else in another country. If I want to do a wire transfer, I can't even do it from my phone or my laptop. I have to go into a branch. I have to have all this different information from his bank to our bank. And it's going to take three to five business days usually. And it's literally faster to grab that cash in a big duffel bag, hop on an airplane and take it to that country and drop it off yourself than it is to wire it to somebody. And in the, in this day and age, that seems like it's, that needs, that needs to change. So this is why the banks are interested in the blockchain uh, technology, um, but we know there's a hidden hidden hand behind the banks who are uh, absolutely going to use this technology to essentially track, trace, database every single person on the planet eventually, and be able to just flip the switch and shut you off if uh, you know if if they don't like what you're doing anymore. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's what we're all worried about and have been worried about. So there's an argument for the cryptos on both sides of the coin. One is to be wary of them and, you know, do your research. Uh, the other is to hope that they will bring a freer monetary system for humanity. Dan, it was a absolute pleasure to meet your acquaintance. Thanks for coming on. Can you tell people about your YouTube channel? Sure. Um, it is youtube.com slash spider. Um, if you just uh, search press, press for truth, you'll find it. And, um, yeah, that's, that's in a nutshell. Everything goes there. The website is pressfortruth.ca and, uh, all my links are always in every YouTube video in the description of all my various social medias and all that jazz. All right. Well, very good guys. If you get a chance, if you're on YouTube now, especially logged in, Head over, just Google Press for Truth. That's the easiest way to find it. And subscribe to Dan's channel. He's putting up remarkable content, real journalism, on a weekly basis, sometimes daily by daily. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for your time, and thanks for your voice. Thank you. All right. And guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you valued this information and information like this, do subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us for real news 24-7 at sgtreport.com and a special thanks to our patrons over at patreon slash sgtreport. You guys are making a huge difference for us and giving us a lifeline regardless of what YouTube or Google do no matter how many dirty tricks they play moving forward and we really do value your support. Thank you so much. And guys thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful day. God bless. Powers that be are sort of freaking out because they're losing. They didn't anticipate the springing of uh, cryptos. It was universe providing us the opportunity to express ourselves outside of the uh, slave system that has been imposed on us. And it's got them all freaked out because they can't close these doors once universe makes them.